media. Um, I'm not sure. Is anybody sick of social media yet? <laughs> not. And I've got a short period of time to talk a little bit about social media, but Kevin and I are going to do a roundtable this afternoon. So please, I want you to feel comfortable coming to us so we can talk about any specific questions that you have regarding social media. But before I begin, I really sort of want to assess my audience. So I'm going to ask you to stand if you currently have a social media account, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, an account. So stand if you have an account. Okay, it's pretty much everybody. Maybe minus one or two people. Stay standing if you're active on that account, meaning you post, you share, okay? Not if you're just a voyeur like a lot of my friends are, that you're just stalking people on Facebook. That doesn't count. So stay standing if you're active. Now stay standing if you're using social media as a nurse in your business or profession in some way. Okay, we lost, I think, the majority of the group. Okay, everybody can sit down now. But I will tell you, I expected that last number to be higher in this forum than any other forum, but I will go and talk about social media and academic organizations and healthcare institutions. And out of, say, an audience of 100 people, there might be one or two nurses standing on that third question. And so what we're going to talk about today is, you know, maybe why nurses aren't using social media. Because I will tell you something, in general, we're not using it as much as the other industries are. When I started my business about three years ago, I had a business called RT Connections, and the business is really me as a speaker doing seminars, workshops, I published a couple of books. And everybody told me, well, if you want to be known as an expert in your field, you gotta get involved in social media. And I remember first thinking about that, and I was afraid, because I thought, I'm not really sure I know how to utilize social media for the benefits and the value that it gives, without harming myself or, you know, how could I protect myself? So that's sort of the premise of my talk today is, you know, using social media as a friend or sort of foe. Well, <laughs> here's just a couple of statistics. Look at the number by 2017. Revenue generated from mobile devices is expected to exceed $9.5 billion. Billion dollars. More than a billion unique users visit YouTube every month. I think most of them are on Kevin's site, probably, <laughs> on his YouTube channel. And about 9% of all people have their mobile device within arm's reach. Does anybody here not have their mobile device within arm's reach? <laughs> there are 180 million blogs right now. And when I first looked at some of these statistics, I got a little bit overwhelmed. But then I thought to myself, it's all your perception, right? So I saw this with the mobile device and the revenue as an opportunity. And I saw this a billion unique visitors on YouTube as an opportunity. Likewise, with the mobile devices and the blog. So I want you to start looking at social media and using some of the platforms as an opportunity for you to have your voice heard and to be known for your specialty. So we're going to talk about first social media as a friend. Here's why you should use it. It really builds an audience for you. Gives you a forum to share content and other things, to promote yourself. So it builds your audience. It taps into social proof. And Michelle talked about this uh, just before. So there's a, a psychologist, uh, very, very well known for his work on influence. His name is Robert Caldini, and I highly recommend if you really want to get involved in how do you influence decisions from other people, how do you engage in this whole social proof that you read some of the books that he's written. Here's social proof, I'll give you an example. I get people who will uh, ask, or they want to follow me on Twitter, so I'll get the, you have a new follower. And so I look at their site first, I will tell you, there's a difference in whether or not I choose to follow that person back. Some of that decision is based on how many current followers they have. If somebody wants to follow me, so they'll follow me. And I have 
to decide am I going to follow back. If they have 40 followers, I'll think about it. If they have 40,000 followers, oh, I'm going to follow them back. It's human nature to do that because if 40,000 people are following this person, this is probably a person that I want to establish a relationship with versus 40 followers. And one thing I learned about Twitter that I didn't know before, you got to have a balance of how many people you're following and how many followers you have. So, for example, once you hit the 2,000 follower, like if I want to follow somebody 2,000 follower mark, I can't follow anybody else until I have close to that number of people following me. So I'm very selective of who I decide to follow. Social proof helps determine whether or not I'm going to follow somebody. So it's important for your business. It humanizes your brand. There's a lot of technology out there, especially in social media. All these hashtags we've been talking about and app symbols and all these tweet chats. But there's a human being behind all of that technology. And it's so nice to be able to come here and meet some of the humans behind some of the social media platform people and technology that we've seen out there. But there's always a human being. It allows you to you know, humanize who you are in your brain. And it allows you to build your um, sphere of influence. So we know this, right? You can't force anybody to do anything. You have no control over anybody else but yourself, but you can certainly influence them. And sometimes the way you do that are by the things that you post on social media. It allows you to reach a global market. And Andrew mentioned, you know, my market, I thought it was uh, born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and still live there. I see Michelle, I'm like home girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we won't talk about the Steelers, but oh, we'll talk about our buckos, right? Yes. Pirates are doing really well. And there's some other people here from Pittsburgh, so uh, I guess it's the happy place you guys are going to come to this, Justin Pittsburgh. But we, uh, we were talking about this where my market is not Pittsburgh. I don't spend a lot of my time marketing my services to the people in Pittsburgh. I have more of a global market. So um, my area of specialty is nursing and bullying. It's the topic of uh, my first book. I do a lot of workshops and seminars. Um, Believe it or not, not just with nurses, the physicians are starting to get involved in wanting my help to improve their relationship and how we communicate with each other. And so I have nurses contacting me, asking for help about bullying from all over the world. I have a very dear friend now from Scotland who I met through social media. I have people from South Africa, from Brazil, contacting me, so I'm able to reach people from all over the world, and that's another reason why social media can help. And the more social media platforms you're involved in and you're active on, the higher your ranking is on Google, right? It's all about Google ranking. And then, of course, it turns your viewers into customers once you build up a relationship with them. And here's the key. Your target audience is using social media. You know, Andrew already mentioned one out of every seven people are using Facebook. You know, uh, and I thought to myself, well, what about elder care? Are they utilizing social media? Yes, they are. More and more. A lot of times just as a way to stay connected with their children and their grandchildren and their families, but they are on these social media sites. But I think for me, the most important reason to use social media is to build relationships with people. Because that is the heart and soul of social media. You can have all the latest and greatest technology, but it's making that human connection with somebody that you don't know. Uh, Kim. Kim and I have met through social media on LinkedIn, and we didn't realize we were attending the same conference together. And she messaged me, I messaged her back. We're like this now, right, Kim? Patty, where's Patty? Is she still in the room? Patty, she loves me. Oh, I'm mad at her now. She's my friend through, through LinkedIn. So you establish these connections with people. And again, you get so hung up on the technology, but you get so hung up on the technology, get hung up on building these relationships. So I want you to meet Perry. <coughs> Perry is the Dean of Simpson University in Redding, California, which is in Northern California. 
I met Perry through LinkedIn. So here's what I do. When I first started utilizing social media for business, I thought, okay, I've got to be known as the content expert out there. How do I do this? What's my first step? Because I want people to say, do this and then do that. I want practical advice. So I started a blog. And I still blog a lot. And I'm, and I'm actually thrilled to share this highlight with Keith Carlson. Keith and I, his blog is phenomenal and has been recognized by many different groups. But recently, Keith and I were identified on nurse.com as one of the top 11 nurse blogs that you should be reading. So I'm very happy to share that honor with Keith. <laughs> So I started blogging and I started filming some YouTube videos. And what I would do then is I would share those links on LinkedIn. And I joined groups on LinkedIn. There's educator groups. Because you think about who's your audience? Who's going to hire me to come and speak at their organization? There's educators, nurses in professional development, chief nursing officers, right? So you find those groups and then you join. And then you just start posting some things. So Perry started commenting on some of my blog posts and YouTube videos. Wow, this is really great. I'm going to share this with my students. Wow, this is great. I'm going to share this with my faculty. And over time, Harry and I built this relationship. And how do you flip this into a business? Because it took probably a year for us having conversations back and forth. Perry needed a keynote speaker for his Nurses Week event last year. Who did Perry call? Perry called me. When my first book came out, Perry bought 50 of my books to give to his faculty members. And so last year I went out and I actually met Perry. That's me, Perry, and his wife, Julie, who's faculty there. They have three daughters and they are brand new grandparents. They just had a grandson this past week. I consider Perry and his wife dear friends of mine now because we met on LinkedIn, we established a relationship. I got business out of it because I actually have gotten more work because he keeps recommending me to people. And I feel like I'm part of their family. That's how you can utilize social media. Um, oh, yeah, you guys already met them, right? <laughs> okay, so I met Kevin and Keith a couple of years ago, and they actually had me on their radio station. I've actually been on there a couple of times now. And I've learned a lot from them, too. And Keith and I have actually had some conversations off social media, but actually on the phone. We text each other, we've had conversations. When I came down here, as soon as I saw them, I'm like, oh, 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 hugs, hugs, hugs. I already warned Andrew, right, Andrew? I said, I'm warning you, I'm a hugger. So brace yourself, okay? I'm Italian, we hug everybody. And so they're my friends. And I just met them on Friday. And we hung out, look at Kevin and the little sombrero hat the Mexican place. We're having a good time, right? And we're also talking business. How can we support each other? How can we help each other? That's how you tap into the power of social media. It's by building these relationships that I'm going to tell you don't come overnight. It takes time. Just like any relationship, it takes time. So here's some just some take-home strategies on how to build relationships. Always send a personal message when you're asked to connect, especially on LinkedIn. I never just do the connect button. I have crafted actually a, like a, a message. I really like to connect with you on LinkedIn, and then I add in something very specific to that person. I see that you're a nurse educator too. I see that you live in the Pittsburgh area. You know, go Pens because my husband's a huge you know Penguins fan. But always add that personal message. Offer free stuff. Give everything away. Uh, I have on my website a resource that says Bully Tools. I have so much free stuff on there. I'm in a doctoral program. I graduated in December. Thank the Lord. I've been in the program for five years. But I did an independent study. I wrote an annotated bibliography of about 55 articles on, on bullying, okay, not all this related. And I started giving it to people. Um, some people actually included it on their blog and they sent it out. And I've had so many people say to me, What? It took me a whole semester to write this, right? Read all these articles, right? Why wouldn't I give it to you for free? It was a lot of work on my part. You don't have time for that. You know, so we've got to start sharing things first. Because when you establish that relationship and people believe that you're really authentic, like I always tell people I share everything. Will somebody take advantage of that? Maybe. But the majority of people won't. 
and I focus on the majority. So share your stuff. Always thank your followers and thank them with a sincere thank you, something specific to them. Thank your follower. Focus on them, not you. And engage in conversations beyond social media, just like you know I've done with a lot of people. All right, so we're going to talk about the bad stuff now. Because it can be your foe. So I travel a lot for a living. And I'm a very social person, and I love people, and I meet people, and I probably give away too much personal information to people. Okay? Sorry. So I met this one guy on a plane. He was a physician. And we shared an airplane together. It was only him and I. Small airplane from like Scranton to, I think, New Jersey, or um, Newark. Yeah, Newark, New Jersey. He found out about me, asked me questions. He says, oh, I work for this one organization. We might be looking for a consultant. This is great. Oh, I'm coming down to that location. Oh, my gosh, we'll have to get together. Send me your resume. I'll get you pulled up. But on and on and on about this business relationship. I was thrilled. Started getting text messages from him that all of a sudden I started to realize were a little inappropriate. To make a long story short, he became a stalker. Seriously. My husband's a detective. I said, can you go through these text messages? Is this inappropriate? Inappropriate? And he's like, yeah. Hail to the yeah, inappropriate. Okay, calling me babe. He was like 30 years old. He's calling me babe. I'm like, uh. You know when you get that little, oh, that doesn't feel right. I should have ended it right there, but I kind of offend him by calling him out on that. Uh, what's his babe thing? Anyways, all I can say is thank God I didn't tell him the hotel that I was staying at when I was going to that area to do a, a two-day course. But I did have to talk to security about if anybody comes in looking for me because he knew exactly where I was speaking and what I was you know, speaking about. On my way here, I'm in a super shuttle, bus filled. I started having a conversation with a really nice gentleman, asking me all kinds of questions, complimenting me. He said I had something called brain proficiency. I have brain proficiency, so right away, I like this guy, he's complimenting me, right? All of a sudden, he starts taking it down this path of his business, and I'm thinking, oh boy, here it comes, going to try and sell me something, he wants my business card, all these things, am I giving this my business card or not? Like, what do I do? So I'm thinking, you know, is this legit? It's funny, because him and I are talking, everybody else is quiet, he gets out of the shuttle before me, silence in the, in the shuttle, and then I say out loud, Dear Lord, please don't let him be a whack job, <laughs> okay? And they started laughing because they're like, oh, well, we're worried about you, honey. You can start asking way too many personal questions. All of that happens on social media, too. You've got to be careful what you say to people on social media because you don't know them. I'm going to tell you most people are okay. They're not trying to scam you, but there are some scammers out there. So here are some security tips. If you have a business where you have employees, you've got to have social media policy. Andrew already talked about that. You've got to update your privacy settings on your social media sites. So 70% of all people are concerned about their privacy on social media sites, yet only 30% of people actively, ongoingly, check their privacy settings. Here's what I want you to do. When you set up a page, if you don't have a page yet, for any of these sites, quarterly, go into the privacy settings and check, because sometimes they change. You want to make sure that you update them. You should change your passwords every now and then. Um, so I had this password basketball. Because when I was, my daughter was young, she played basketball. I used basketball for everything. Everything. If anybody found out my password was basketball for one thing, they could assume that I probably used it for everything else and get into some accounts I wouldn't want them to be in. So make sure you have different accounts. Make sure you have longer characters. The, different symbols, numbers. you got to clean out your apps. Every now and then I'll wonder why something doesn't work right. If you go into like Twitter and Facebook, sometimes you unknowingly download an app that you don't really know you're downloading. So you just want to go in, I do this quarterly, and clean out anything you don't want to use anymore. Minimize your personal information. So a friend of mine, I tweeted, um, put it on Facebook, um, thrilled to be in Orlando, everybody's so nice in Orlando. Oh my gosh, you're in Orlando, let's get together. She started having a conversation with me, where are you staying, all this stuff. I'm like, you know what, I'll send you details offline. I want people to know where I'm staying, because you don't know who's out there watching. So just be careful about your personal information. And I'm sure you guys know, don't ever tell people, oh, my husband and I are going on vacation for an entire two weeks, you know, because then people are going to come and rob you. 
become familiar with common scams. How many of you who tweet have ever gotten a scam? Oh my God, there's a horrible picture of you being spread all over the place. I fell victim to that a while ago. Like, oh my gosh, right? And I opened it, got a virus. There's another one right now called Kobe Face, Code Face. It's a, there's a whole gang of people. It's the Code Face gang. They're actually somewhere in Europe that they can, you know, infect your computer and your sites. And then avoid platform overload. If you have active platforms in every single social media, you know, site, then you're not gonna be able to pay attention to what's happening on all those sites as much as you can as you, as you just have a few. And then, of course, you gotta hover in the month there. You've got, especially if you have employees, you have to pay attention to what they're posting, and you have to start paying attention to what other people are posting about you. And I love the, you know, somebody said, why don't you Google yourself? Seriously, Google yourself and see what other people are saying about you. And I love this part, too. It says, things that survive forever, nuclear waste, cockroaches, Phone packaging, pyramids of Giza, and a photo of you drunk on Facebook. Okay? <laughs> because as we talked about earlier, it'll stay forever. So where do you go from here? Choose a few platforms depending on your target audience. Um, I use LinkedIn the most, then Twitter, Facebook not so much. Because people go to Facebook to be entertained, to have some inspirational things, and to you know, share photos. So I don't use it as much for my business, but you may listen to the noise. And they talk a lot about this in social media. You just got to kind of sit back and listen to what people are talking about. And that will give you, so those of you who talk a lot about elder care, pay attention to what people are saying about elder care. And that might help generate some ideas for you to start blogging about it or start to engage in conversations. Provide good content. Content is key. When you, if you want to look something up, look up content marketing. And it can really give you an idea. I mean, you can do lists, you can do opinions, but you want the content to be good because it's going to represent you in your brand. You want to start engaging in real conversations with people. So even beyond just retweeting, engage in a conversation with somebody. Ask them questions. I uh, spoke at the AMSN convention. Uh, I did nurse the tea. And I had a lot of positive feedback from this. So my last blog post last week was my introduction on how I started this talk. And I got a lot of retweets on this. And somebody said, I really like this. This is a great topic. And then I replied back to this person. Do you think it would be valuable if I shot a video about this too? And she said, absolutely. So what did I do? I shot a video. And I posted it. I said, thanks. I, was, I just needed somebody to bounce an idea off of. But it was a conversation that her and I had. Which, which is exactly what I want you to do. An experiment, try different things. We've got the insights and all the social media platforms that you can see what's doing really well, what's not. So on Facebook, I can post an article that I think is really important to nurses. And I get 60 views. I post a picture of a puppy, something about nursing, I get 2,000 views, 25 shares. People don't want to use Facebook to read articles. They want to be inspired in Facebook. So I try to do that one. The picture that I posted of me, Kevin, and Keith, lots of shares, lots of views. I post my blog on Facebook, not so much. Because people, you know, you have to know your market, you have to know what works, but experiment. And then make sure you're protecting your business and yourself. So I'm going to end with this quote. You can never go wrong by investing in communities and the human beings within them. So it's about this connection with human beings. And if you're worried about the technology, like I am still to this day learning everything, I'm going to quote my friend Andrew. When I emailed Andrew, or I messaged him a couple of weeks ago, I said, I don't know how you do all this. Like, there's so much hashtagging and all this stuff. And he wrote back, it's not rocket science, Renee. And he's right. It's not. Just start. Just get in and start having conversations with people. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you.
my husband Warren was always a social person, and I would say, I don't want to go there. I want to go home. It's time to go to bed. I don't want to stay up any longer. I don't want to talk to them. Damn, you're driving me crazy. You know, I don't want to do all that. But he was always a very social person. So I love computers. I started with computers, for God's sake, back with the um, punch cards that long ago. Uh, <clears throat> and I like the computers. So I'm able to be more social on Facebook and LinkedIn and so forth. I have kind of played with it. My life has been, has consumed my time recently. I don't really have a personal life and a business life. I have one life, that's my life. You know, I mean, I don't split me down the middle. So, um, but a lot of my caregiving and so forth uh, has taken a lot of my time. When we started this conference, of course, a year ago, but recently thinking about getting the word out and getting more into Facebook and LinkedIn, I was like, uh, she said, do I do Facebook, do I do LinkedIn, do I do them both? I had been an old, um, what was it called, Plaxo? Years ago. So anyway, um, I'm backing back on my personal life. I'm only communicating with my family on Facebook. And then we have the association has a business page on Facebook and I'll continue that. Uh, I don't care where you ate last night. You know, I don't know all that stuff. And I'm tired of babies and grandbabies and I'm tired of puppies. I'm less tired of puppies than I am babies. So <clears throat> Um, I'm concentrating more on LinkedIn. I'm doing a little more on Google. They're kind of enticing me. They're a little more um, intuitive, I think. So anyway, and I like Twitter. So I'm still in the process of determining who I'm going to be when I grow up. Uh, but I think that's where my social life is going to be. I do answer the phone, call me. I'm there. I like to talk on the phone. I like to email. That's my main communication is um, email. And but I answer the phone. Uh, I have cut my time back. I answer the phone usually from nine to four, Monday through Thursday, Eastern time. But I, who was it? Someone I talked to. I think in here just on a Sunday they called. Me. So you can reach me. You can talk to, with me. I'm in the process, God, I hate to admit this in front of all of you, but I am in the process of changing my nutrition. Uh, I need to get back to looking at myself and, and being a little more cognizant of what I eat and what I do. So I am in the process of doing that. I'm not doing anything crazy, but my goal is good nutrition, so I'm doing that. I found that my husband, who sits in that chair and has extremely fair balance, can exercise better than I can. Especially squats, I can't do that. Worth squat. So um, <clears throat> part of the reason I'm saying all this is maybe maybe how long ago has it been?